and welcome back to Heiner Bilzi Ride. This is a first for us. We did get a Jimny in. And what a Jimny it is. I think I've never seen a Jimny that's got more stuff in and on it. Uh, GVM? I'm not sure, but I think it'll be all right. I'll show you the details after the intro. First thing to see on this is obviously the lighting system. There's laser lamp lights in the front and in the back of the vehicle. Very nicely looking. The customer went for the option with the position lights on the roof rack and also position lights in the seven inch Sentinel Elite driving lights. This is probably the best spec'd out lighting system that has been installed in a Jimny so far. Should give very nice light from the top and from the bottom here when driving along at night. So it's obviously the most visible. I do like that these position lights can be left on. It just, it just gives such a cool look to the vehicle. Uh, other things that we've done, we've installed an aerial here for the GME. XRS two-way and then we have installed power distribution on the start battery installed some relays here for the bar lights and for the driving lights and also for the horns so this has got some upgraded Hella horns in it as well so it does not sound like a small car when this car is honking the horn anymore that's basically it under the bonnet as you can see there isn't a lot of stuff going on under the Jimny bonnet, very small start battery, but sufficient. This is a minimalistic car. This is almost like the tiny version of a 70 series Land Cruiser. That's why well, everybody in the workshop really likes these things. But the real treat is inside the vehicle. Let me show you in the back of the vehicle what we've got in here. So we've got on the back here, more laser lamps, linear series work lights. They're obviously bar lights, but they are really good as work lights as well because they've got such a wide, even spread, those light bars. And then, look at that. It's almost like the miniature version of what you can put into a 200 or 300 series. Bushman upright fridge, including a little freezer compartment. Then we've got an ARB single piston compressor on the side here where you can plug your air in there, turn the compressor on, already pumped up. There's no tank in this. You don't really need one because filling up the tires in this car will be so quick because they're such small tires. And then we've got the Victron battery monitor just on the side here. This has got Bluetooth functionality built in as well. So you can have an app running on your phone and you can see what's happening with your battery system while you're driving along. Uh, the internals have been built by a company called JC Custom 4x4. I've never heard of them before, but I do quite like how they fitted this out. You've got a big drawer here. Then you've got a table that you can pull out. And you can put a sink in here as well. Uh, definitely a lot to put in a chimney. And you've got another drawer under the fridge here, just for small bits and pieces. And then obviously we got charge points here on the side. We've got USB charge points, more USB charge points, and then two accessory slash cigarette lighter sockets on the side here as well. That should enable the customer to charge all his equipment and also plug in some camp lights for his awning or whatever he might need to plug in there. 
Now the power system itself, because we've only seen the end bits of the power system, the power system is inside. I'll show you that now. In here, behind the seats, this is where the magic happens. So what we've got here is, of course, our Egan DC hub as the main power distribution unit. Then we've got a 100 amp hour slimline lithium battery from Amtron. This is the shunt for the battery monitor, main fuse for the DC hub. And then on the side here, we've got the Red Arc BCDC 1225D. You have to be careful with these. The Jimneys are probably on the limit of what DC-DC charger they can handle with the 25 amp unit because they haven't got really big alternators in these cars. So that's one thing to look out for. It might just work with the 40 amp, but it will be very borderline and you definitely want to use it in voltage sensing mode because in ignition sensing mode, it might draw down the start battery. This is the back of the fridge and there's another little access point right here. Quite handy storage actually for something you don't have to get to very often. And we've got our solar plug-in point because we haven't got permanent roof solar. The customer can plug in a solar blanket here when he's stationary for a longer period of time. Another thing we've done because when you sit in here now you can't really see anything out the back of the vehicle anymore. It's very, very limited. So we've installed our RAM mount holder up here and we've installed the rear view mirror camera. This has got a front camera and a rear camera and it also acts as a dash cam at the same time. So this is accessory triggered and if I put the key in, It starts beeping. We haven't got an SD card in there yet. And you can see, we're now seeing out of the back window, which has got, hold on a sec, I'll close the door so you can see it better. There you go. This is pretty much like having the mirror is still installed looking out of the rear window and it will also record to the front at the same time. I'll turn the beeping back off. And that's it. It will have a little bit of a delay and then it will turn off. You could connect this thing to constant battery from your lithium battery if you wanted to for constant recording and you will constantly record the front and the back of your vehicle. Extremely handy and if you want to get the data off it, all you need to do is get the SD card out of the top, put it in your laptop and you can get the files off of it. What we also do is with every vehicle, when we use the DC hub, we have a print out of the fuse layout so the customer knows exactly what is happening. We've also put uh, the two-way handpiece in here and it is pluggable on the bottom here so if you don't want to use it you can just tuck it away in your glove box and if you do want to use it you just plug it back in neatly. I really like it. Then there's also uh, switches. Cool thing about the Jimneys is they've got the same style switches that uh, the Toyota Hilux have. So they're the small Toyota switches not the square ones just the small ones and we can use the switches that we generally use for Toyota installs, for installs in Jimny's as well. Makes for a very nice finish and makes the whole cab look completely factory as if everything has been put in directly from Suzuki. The wiring for the roof rack is coming through an IP67 rated gland right there. So there's a hole that we put in the roof and we put a gland on it. These glands are save up to 1.5 meter depth of water to resist water ingress. So I always tell customers, if you're more than 1.5 meter under water, you've got other problems than to worry about water coming through the gland on the roof. And from there, we've got a 12 core cable going to this aluminum junction box up here. 
And from here, we are feeding the rear work lights and we're also feeding the front driving light bars. Uh, the idea of running a 12 core to the roof is that if things need to be added in the future, let's say a customer wants a solar panel or some extra lights to the side, we don't have to run extra cables anymore. We've got all the cables up on the roof already and we've got them really close to the DC hub inside the vehicle. So we can just add extra components, run them to the junction box, connect the wiring on the inside of the vehicle and all of this can stay together and it makes it a lot easier to add to the system. We've also made a custom bracket here for the camera. This is for the rear view mirror and we usually put these on the inside of the vehicle so they're quite protected and they just look through the rear window. Make sure that the camera stays intact for a very long time and then obviously the cable for the camera runs through the factory rubber boot. And that's really it. I'm quite excited. The first time we've done a Jimny with a really nice rear fit out, I think it turned out really nicely. The only thing that's left to do now is to, if I can find it, ah, here we go, give it our patch of approval. This one is now officially ready to drive anywhere. Thanks and see you for the next one.